Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be finding the radius of a circle inscribed in a semicircle along with a square and the radius of the semicircle is 1 as shown. So let's go ahead and find uh, the uh, side length for the square first because we're going to need that. How do we do that? Okay, so let's go ahead and mark the center for the semicircle and let's make some connections here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that to this vertex here. So basically, to find the side length for the square or whatever lengths we need from there, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So we know that this is a midpoint, right? So if this is x, this is also going to be x. Therefore, the side length for the square is going to be 2x. Okay, so how do you find x then? Well, this is the radius of the semicircle, and we know that it's 1. So we can go ahead and write this relationship. 2x squared plus x squared is equal to 1. This means that 4x squared plus x squared is equal to 1, meaning 5x squared equals 1. And from here, x squared equals 1 fifth. If you square root both sides, you're going to be getting 1 over 5, which is um, square root of 1 over 5. So we can also write it as square root of 5 over 5 after rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so the side length for the square is going to be 2 root 5 over 5. Okay. Let's see what else we can do here. We can also make a connection here for the centers. Suppose this is the center for the square, I mean circle. Let's go ahead and connect these two centers. And obviously, the segment that connects the centers is going to go through the point of tangency, which is super important. Okay, now, we know that we're trying to find the radius of the circle. Let's call that R. And let's drop a perpendicular here. This is also going to be R. Let's draw a segment that is horizontal. That's also going to be R. And this is also going to be R. So we have a small square there. Okay, let's see what else we can use. Well, our goal is to find R. So we need to be able to, you know, use the Pythagorean theorem here. So how do we do that? Well, uh, there are some lengths that we do need to find, right? So, for example, if I mark this point, the intersection point of the uh, segment and the side of the square, not the circle, we got to be careful about that. So, let's call this uh, segment, the length of this segment A, and let's call this segment B. Now, you got to be extra careful here because B is not the same as R because we actually have a little bit more than the radius, okay? But those lengths are important. Okay, so what do we know about those lengths, first of all? Well, if you add up the lengths A plus B plus R, that also gives you the radius of the semicircle. So we know that A plus B plus R is equal to 1, okay, which is important. Now, from here, I'm able to write A plus B in terms of R. So I can safely say that A plus B is the same as 1 minus r. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this in my equation. Okay, what else can we do here? Well, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem, right? And how can we use that? Well, we have a right triangle here, right? That we can use to our advantage. So we're going to go ahead and write the Pythagorean theorem for that right triangle. Okay, the legs, one of the legs is x because we call this length x plus r, right? And we know that x is root 5 over 5, so I can go ahead and write that root 5 over 5 plus r squared, which is the base, basically, plus r, which is kind of like the height, squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. But the hypotenuse is a plus b, so I'm just going to square that, okay? So that's our expression, and that's actually the only equation we're going to need to solve for r, which is pretty interesting. And it's also a little easier than the other ones we've done before. Okay, we don't need like a system of equations here. We only need one equation. But before we start solving it, we have to replace a plus b with 1 minus r. So let's go ahead and do that here. So I'll be getting root 5 over 5 plus r quantity squared plus r squared is equal to a plus b, which is 1 minus r squared. Okay? All right. Now, 
we're going to expand this obviously and we're going to be getting a nice quadratic equation from here hopefully let's see what we get if you square this is like one over root five so if you square that you're going to be getting one over five obviously right and then if you multiply the two ab this is going to equal two root five over five multiply by r plus r squared plus we have another r squared right and this whole thing is equal to 1 minus 2r plus r squared. Okay? Now, one of the r squares is going to cancel out. We can go ahead and cancel that out. And to get a full quadratic, we can just go ahead and put everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and do that now. r squared plus 2 root 5 over 5r five plus 2r. Now, we have 1. 1 fifth here, so 1 fifth minus 1, that's going to be minus 4 fifths, right? 1 fifth minus 1 is 4 fifths, negative 4 fifths, and this whole thing is equal to 0. Nice. Now, we can multiply everything by 5 to get rid of the denominators. Let's go ahead and do that first. Before, notice that I'm not making a common denominator, just multiply everything by 5 straight through. Let's do that. This gives us 5r squared plus 2 root 5r plus... 10r minus 4 is equal to 0. Okay? Now, we can go ahead and add like terms here. Obviously, we have two terms with r in them, so we can just go ahead and write it as 2 root 5 plus 10r minus 4 is equal to 0. Okay? So, basically, we got a really nice quadratic equation here, and we're just going to go ahead and solve for r. So here's one thing to remember here, um, that the product of the roots from Vieta of the solutions is negative, which means that we have a positive root and a negative root. Obviously, the negative root is not going to count, so we're after the positive solution. Let's just go ahead and focus on that so we can only focus on the positives here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and write this down. First of all, uh, we're going to need the discriminant, so let's go ahead and calculate that separately. The discriminant is going to be b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to be b squared, right, minus 4 times 5 times c, which is negative 4. And let's go ahead and simplify this. The discriminant, which we can also call delta. Okay, let's go ahead and expand this. 2 root 5 squared is 4 times 5, which is 20. If I multiply these together and double, that's going to give me 40 root 5 plus 100. And that's going to be a positive term. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 4 is 80. Okay. If you put it all together, that's going to be a nice expression. 180 plus 20 is 200. And that's going to be plus 40 root 5. Now, one thing we can do here is because we're going to be square rooting delta, you can just go ahead and factor out the greatest common factor. But we can also do that later. Okay. So let's go ahead and set it up for R. Remember, we're looking for the positive solution. Okay, so negative B is going to be this one, negative B, plus minus, but I'm only interested in the positive solution, the square root of B squared minus 4AC, which is the same as discriminant, which is right there, 200 plus 40, root 5, all over 2 times A, a is 5 in this case, so if you double that, you're just going to get 10. Okay? So, basically, uh, we can just write this in several different ways, obviously. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. That's pretty much the solution for R. And you can verify that this is going to be a positive solution. But that's it. We found the radius. It's a very radical answer. Thank you for watching. Please comment. If you like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so. If you didn't like the video, also comment and let me know what you think about it. See you in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.